Can I just give one example, Mr Speaker, of what's happening? Take, for example, the food bank in Hastings, represented by the DWP secretary. Its demand has gone up by 80% after universal credit was rolled out. And the Trussell Trust reports that a significant proportion of referrals are relating to benefit changes, delays or sanctions, a huge increase in food bank uses. Mr Speaker, 4.1 million of our children are growing up in poverty. Last week, the Resolution Foundation said that UK child poverty was on course to hit record levels. Will the Prime Minister take action to prevent this? Will she start by ending the two-child limit? Will she end the benefit cap? Will she restore the 1,000 Sure Start centres that have been lost under her government? What do I say to the right honourable gentleman? As we look at the welfare system, what we want to ensure is that we have a welfare system that is fair to those who need to use the welfare system, but is also, but is also fair to all those people, those hard-working taxpayers, whose taxes actually go to pay for the welfare system. He talks, he talks about child poverty. Absolute child poverty is at a record low, and we know that a child growing up in a home where all the adults work is around five times less likely to be in poverty than a home where nobody works. And under this government, the number of children in workless households is at a record low. So when he stands up, will he recognise that work is the best route out of poverty? And will he recognise that while we're talking of work, he should welcome the fact that we now have more people in work than ever before? Three and a half million more people than in 2010. Mr Speaker, it clearly isn't working because so many people who are themselves working very hard, sometimes doing two or even three jobs, have to access food banks just to feed their children. She used to talk about the just about managing. Well, they're not managing anymore. Income inequality is up. In work poverty, up. Child poverty, up. Pensioner poverty, up. Homelessness, up. Mr Speaker, austerity, austerity, austerity is clearly not over. People on low incomes are getting poorer, while those at the top are getting richer. The economy is slowing, manufacturing is in recession, and this government's shambolic handling of Brexit... The Right Honourable Gentleman will not be shouted down. It isn't going to happen. The attempt is foolish. It demeans the House. Stop it. Grow up. Jeremy Corbyn. Speaker, austerity is clearly not over. People on low income are getting poorer, while those at the top get richer. The economy is slowing. Manufacturing is in recession. And this government's shambolic handling of Brexit is compounding years of damaging austerity. Their policies are driving people to food banks and poverty in the fifth richest economy on this planet. Are any of these, any of these burning injustices a priority for the Prime Minister? Mr. Right Honourable Gentleman, manufacturing is not in recession. Can I say to the Right Honourable Gentleman that it is not the case, it is, the, it is not the case of what he says about the lowest earners. As I said earlier, if he'd listened to my answer, the lowest earners have seen the highest rise in their, in, in their pay for 20 years as a result of the introduction of the national living wage, the national living wage introduced by a Conservative led yeah. government. And if he's talking about actually helping people who are in work, let's talk about the fact that we've cut income tax to help people keep more of what they earn. We've frozen fuel duty, so we're helping people where the car is a necessity, not a luxury. Since 2010, those measures have saved working people £6,500. From the way the Right Honourable Gentleman talks, you'd have thought that he would have supported them. But what did he do? No, he's voted against them over a dozen times. And that's the reality. It's working people who always pay the price of Labour. Yeah.